In this video, I will share a Mo Norman swing secret that has never been revealed before. I had no idea that Mo did this, and the only reason why I picked up on it is because I really liked David Lee's gravity golf concepts. The only problem that I had with them, with his concept, was that he thought, so this is the butt end of the club, so there's the club up there, so here are your hands are holding it. David was convinced that the first three to six inches of the downswing should be a deadfall. And I will show you why. And he also told me that Mo Norman uh, was, was a, epitomizes per, the gravity golf swing in perfection. So I will show you why David thought that. Uh, and I will show you what Mo Norman's actual vertical drop was. And I found it in this video here where this collection of, of great player swings, Norman, and this is also where I got the Nick Price footage from that I used in a recent video. So this is uh, Mo at setup, hitting using, I guess, four wood, going to go after, you know, he, he, he used to just, to the, to, 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 the, to the viewer's amazement, he would just pound four woods uh, out of divots like they were sitting up on a beautiful lie in the middle of the fairway. Anyway, so Paul Bertoli, PJ Teaching Pro, coined the term vertical drop. Now, when you read or uh, read or listen to videos, read books or listen to videos about Mo Norman's vertical drop, it's always about the hands, just like what David Lee thought, the hands drop. Uh, if you watch Craig Shanklin's video with Mo Norman, he said that his secret to his swing was his vertical drop and horizontal tug. And, and, and Mo thought that the vertical drop was his hands also. And it was not. And I'll show you what I mean. When his hands dropped, it was because of his body. They were falling his body. So Mo's vertical drop was a product of his extended knees at address. Mo Norman was deeply lateral, laterally lunged at impact. So if you laterally lunge at impact to get the most of that move, it's better to start with extended knees because then you have a lot much more room to drop. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. So in this move, by the way, the drop move is not unique to Mo. It's just the depth was unique to him. And I'll show you videos or uh, I'll show you swings of other pros that illustrate lesser drops and variations of the drop strategy movement. So here's Mo to dress. And this is him at impact. So you can see what, what happened. Look at his straight legs and now squatting at impact. Really, it's a lateral lunge move. And he did this much more dynamically when he was young. You know, here he's like 65 years old, and this is about the time when his heart disease started to kind of get after him because he had a heart attack in like 97. And around 94, 95 is where lots of the videos that people look at were, were developed. So this is Brooks Kepka on the top right. You can see, I'll show you. So here, so Brooks starts with flex knees. Mo starts with extended knees. So at impact, Mo will drop, laterally lunge, strike the ball, and rotate. And at impact, Brooks pushes off with his forefeet, extends his leg, and moves his hips backwards. Mo's already set up backwards. He just drops into it. So watch how things change at impact. They, the exact opposite movement takes place. In other words, Mo did not sit up like this for some rigid uh, 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 stance to protect, to, to help him hit balls better in the wind, which I've heard. I mean, it's just, just ridiculous. The extended position is far less stable than the flex position, because this position, you've got some muscular engagement. Here, you really don't. So watch what happens at impact. Boom. So you can see at impact, as I told you, knee extension and his other side, knee extended. And for Mo, at impact, knee flexed, and his front foot, his front leg was also knee flexed. So these are called movement strategies through the ball. And that's the best way, way to look at it. Mo's movement strategy was to drop his body, lateral lunge it, strike the ball, then rotate after impact. And I'll show you what I mean in a, in a, in a, with more pictures in a couple of seconds. So the first thing to appreciate is that you can see uh, him through, through impact. I forgot I had that one in there. So the, the first thing to appreciate is that Mo's setup was not like something that Mo made up himself. I mean, he, he, he got there himself, but it was not like a, the, he wasn't the only guy. You, you can see this is, well, here you go. Top Irish amateur men. This goes way back. This picture you can see clearly is 
probably 1900, before Mo was born. Mo was born in 1930. So this is definitely before Mo was born, no matter what year it was. Notice the set of position. Notice Mo's set of position. You can see straight legs, straight arms, right? So just like one unit, so you can, from shoulder to club, and then straight legs, just like Mo. So from this position, you have to drop into your knees. Otherwise, because you, you cannot swing with extended wobbly knees or extended locked knees. You've got to bend the knees. So this is a great setup position to drop into the ball, which never even occurred to me that this is what he was doing. Now, David Lee talked about dropping, but it was the hands dropping. And Mo talked about his vertical drop of his hands, but not his body dropping. So this is the first thing that Mo did. So notice the setup. And now he stands up. So you can see he changes his spine angle, he keeps his legs straight, and from here, he just drops. Now, when he was young, and I'll show you pictures of him still of his young swing, his, he had a club parallel to, to the ground. So he had a much bigger drop when he was young. You can see him dropping down. So now I'll, I'll, I'll show you what the drop actually happens. So when you see it, so when you see Mo do it like this, it looks like he's, 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 he's engaging his arms, because he is, because he's old, he, and his range of motion is pretty bad compared to when he was young. So, so this is why I'm showing you this young girl who has no muscle mass. Now notice this, the top of the backswing position, relatively similar, straight, bent, same thing for Mo, bent, straight. So from here, the, the little girl drops and then rotates. Mo drops, laterally lunges, strikes the ball, and then rotates. So it's a different movement strategy through the ball. So you can watch them both get into the knee flexed position. And there you go. So you can see, boom. Now the, the important thing to watch with the little girl is that as she's dropping, there is absolutely no engagement of her, her shoulder, arm, hand unit. She is allowing them to follow the sequential movement of her legs and then lower trunk and then finally upper trunk before she releases the club. And that's what we should do. And David Lee talked about that. You want to be passive here, but notice with the little girl, her arms aren't dropping, her body's dropping and her arms follow. It would be ridiculous to drop your arms here without turning your body because now your arms are out racing your lower trunk, which you never want to have happen at the beginning of the downswing. That's the over-the-top deal. So here's Mo again. You can see the drop in impact and through the ball. So that's his vertical drop. Boom. That's it. That is the vertical drop. So here's the little girl again. Now you can see, I said before, she drops and then rotates. Mo drops, laterally lunges, and then rotates. So you can see Mo through the ball is still rotated less than, than the little girl. He strikes it. He's in his lateral lunge position. Now he's going to move his body into rotation. So the little girl drops and rotates. Mo drops, laterally lunges, and then rotates. She just drops and rotates. Whoops, rotates. There you go. So these are different movement strategies. I think Mo's is an easier movement strategy, particularly when you look at the lateral flexion. This is like a, a young girl Joaquin Neiman move. You know, most Older people cannot do this. Although I will tell you, teach, uh, lots of pros, tour pros. Uh, if you look at my video with that, where I showed Larry Nelson at Impact, you know, he he's similar similar to this. Mo, this the reason why Mo could hit 500 balls a day is because he dropped and laterally lunged and struck and then rotated. He didn't do any of this spine potentially spine damaging movement here that this little girl is doing that a lot of pros do. So here's Mo's actual lateral lunge move when he was younger. He might have even been lower when he was young, because he was probably about, I don't know, 40s, 50s, probably not more than 50. But you can see how laterally lunged he is in this image compared to his 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 older self. So, so you can see the different strategies. This is really perfect, right? You can see she dropped, rotated. Mo drops, laterally lunges, strikes a ball, then rotates. And Kepka extends his legs through impact and then rotates about extended legs. Totally different movement strategies through the ball. They're all acceptable. It's just that Norman's is the best. The only problem is that people who teach Norman's swing don't actually teach the actual lateral, the vertical drop move. 
So here is DeChambeau, another strategy. So DeChambeau, before he got all bulked up, he just, he set up position, kind of looked like most, sort of, the arms were straight, but then after that, nothing was similar. So you can see the strategy through the ball here. There is no laterally lunging at all. You can see how different this is. Least stressful, if you can't do Mo's move through the ball, this is the least stressful move through the ball out of the four that you see here. So let's look at old Mo, young Mo. You can see way less dynamic. You can see his Mo is has such momentum toward the target that he you can see the his lead forefoot is off the ground. He's bearing load on the heel. He's his, his foot is probably sort of dragging, medial arch kind of dragging toward the ball, which is what he used to do when, when he was young. You can kind of see it in stills. So totally different move than flat-footed old swing. So this is Moe's, Moe's heart disease swing. This is Moe's, the remnants of Moe's unbelievably dynamic young man swing, which you can watch if you go to YouTube, well, you are right now, and maybe you can do it right now. Open a new window and and put in the, the YouTube search field, Young Mo Norman in his prime, and then watch the young man move. Absolutely unbelievable. Almost no videos of Mo Young. The only place you can get a, a glimpse of this would be at a website called finishtothesky.com. Mo befriended, or this young man, well, he's not a young man now, but when Greg Laverne was just out of high school, he went down to Daytona Beach, and this is where he met Mo, and Mo basically tutored him. So he wrote a couple books about his experience with Mo, and, and luckily enough, he was able to get a hold of footage of an actual Mo Norman young man swing, or younger man swing. You can see here, this looks nothing like the classic Mo Norman swing that people talk about, right? He's a short backswing, all flat. You can see this, if you were just to focus in right here, and you were to look at Jack Nicklaus, very similar looking kind of kind of top of backswing position. Notice Mo's left heel is off the ground. The, the left leg is flexed. The right leg is straight. And then his next move is two. You can see right down here. So here's what we're highlighting. You can go through each one of these. You just go up to, just, just, just open a window and put finish to the sky.com. Scroll down the, 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 the home page. You can, you can click right through this on, on Greg Laverne's site. But look at Moe's lateral lunge. See, he's laterally lunging. This is a lateral lunge move. It was after he strikes the ball, his trunk rotates. And you can see right here, after impact, and after impact, and just before impact, you can see this tree right here, which means that Moe's head has dropped way down to here. This tree that you cannot see the base of is what you see here, which means Mo really dropped when he was young. So he dropped, laterally lunged, and then rotated. And it was his body that was dropping. So I'll show you how common this is. It's exactly what David Lee teaches, only without the, you know, the body drop language. So here is Danny Lee, not to be confused with Danny Lee on the tour right now. I met Danny when he was 12. Now he's like early 30s. And you can see the setup position. Uh, he is, this is just before Danny is going to bring the club away, and I will show you his actual swing uh, in, a, in a second, the entire swing. But if you can see, the club is well above the ball, right? So the club is well above the ball, and which means if he was to put the, the club behind the ball, he would have more uh, trunk flexion, and maybe even more, more leg flexion at, at address. So this is his impact position. You see the body drop. See? So he drops and rotates also. You can see his setup position is similar to the, the, the little girl's position. So Danny drops and rotates versus Mo, who drops laterally lunges and rotates. So totally different movement strategy, but same concept. So if we were to look at the top of the backswing, now remember when Mo Norman was young, it was he, his foot was off the ground, the club was higher, club was to parallel. So we're just going to hone in right now on the legs. You can see they look identical. No difference looking at in the legs. So here's Danny, top of backswing, and he's starting to drop. So watch, remember this picture here? See this? See how Danny just drops with completely passive arms? And I'll show you how long this is. I'll show you at the end of the, after we look at Danny's swing, I'll show you, I think that's what I'm going to show you, uh, how, how much his hands do drop passively. But they drop passively, meaning they follow the body. 
right? The arms don't drop independent of the body. The arms passively follow the body. And you can see as this is drop is taking place, it's almost like the arm, so the arm gets closer to the chest because the chest is moving as a consequence of dropping and rotating a little bit, but the shoulder, the shoulder, arm, hand, club unit are completely passive in this first phase. And this is what David Lee talked about. And so here comes the impact, and there you go. Looks very similar to, you know, this, this is a very common move. You drop, rotate. Or some don't drop and rotate. They just stay knee flex, and then they rotate. That's kind of what R Rory McElroy does. So let's look at, at Danny. So this is what you should do. You should get your setup. You should put lines that you're looking at here. You don't have to worry about the club. And see where you are. Your butt should never be going forward. If your butt goes forward, that means you early extend. Danny does not do that. You can see. Big drop and rotate. So David said, told me, because I asked him, I said, how? I asked him, how much of a drop is supposed to take place before you know the body picks it up? He goes, it's three to six inches. So watch. See that? Absolutely no arm engagement. Easily six, eight inches of passive arm. So this is what David was seeing, but what, what, but, but, but what he didn't appreciate and what the Mo Norman uh, promoters don't appreciate is that it's the body that's dropping and the arms are passive. So here's Danny's swing. Let's watch it this move. Can I get it to go? Huh. Oh, well, I thought I could. Maybe I, oh, well, I thought I could do it. Anyway, I, it, it, it was queued up. I thought I could get it to go. It's not, I'm not going to be able to. Oh, there we go. So I slow mode it, obviously. You can see how passive the arms are, and then they release right there. Perfect sequencing, or pretty close to perfect sequencing. He pounded a five iron over 200 yards. Didn't even hit it perfectly flush. So great move, and that's me right here doing, doing the video. So let's look at Scotty Scheffler. He has a different strategy, right? So this is the thing. Everyone looks for, like, what's this secret or that secret? And there really aren't too many secrets. Uh, all pros, they, almost all pros. Uh, Leishman actually kind of spins off of his toes, but he keeps his hips and legs back. That's why he can do it. Other than other than Leash, maybe a couple other guys that, that are more subtle, no pro hits from the toes. And they keep their trunk back and they drop. They all do that. So here's Scheffler, top of his backswing, and then impact. So set up, impact. Set up impact. You can see which way the body's going. This is the reason why Scheffler goes airborne is because he's got so much rotational momentum. He goes flying and he, and he spins. And I actually did a video that shows this. And you can actually see Scheffler falling backwards. So I started looking at this after I, because I spent a lot of time with David Lee before he passed away this year. We reconnected earlier this year and I helped him write his, uh, his last book on the Yips. We spent a lot of time. So I was really, this was on my mind, this dropping business and this, this gravity business, and I, and I started looking for it, and that's how I came across the fact that Mo dropped his body, and so did so did, so did all, the, all the good gravity players. So here's uh, Mo on top right, and here's Scheffler. Now, here is what I was referring to in terms of setting up for impact. I think I may have mentioned that early on. The, the approach that I take at the Amateur Golfer's Dilemma in the book and the videos is to figure out how we amateurs who lack the professional movement skills can have less horrific swings by getting rid of error factors and trying to move through the ball in a fashion that is less complicated. So the closer you are to the ball, the more complicated your movement through the ball must be because you got to get your body out of the way. The least complicated is over here, which is what most setup position is. Now, you don't have to drop if you set up like Mo Norman. I mean, this is how DeChambeau set up, not quite as far as Mo. He was much more upright. He just kept his pel pelvis the same the same height, backswing, downswing, and through impact. So the first thing you have to do is videotape yourself down the line and then screenshot yourself at address and at impact and you do not want your head going above the line. And so here's what I mean. These guys both, look at it, it looks like almost the same move. And you know that same body movement, right? Just because Scheffler's close to the ball, he's going backwards after he strikes it. You know he jumps backwards and rotates on that left heel. Same general idea, though. They both drop and rotate. Mo drops, laterally lunges, strikes and rotates. A little bit different than Mo. Here's JT Poston. 
people might say, what would you use him for? Because people, it's really amazing. You do videos about pros who are unbelievably good players and you have, <laughs> you have amateurs or maybe club pros or teaching pros saying, what are you doing JT posting for? What about JT? I'm like, well, first of all, you're a teaching pro or, or a good amateur and you can't even remotely play like JT Poston. So JT Poston is a great player. Number 50th in the official world golf ranking as of February 19th. So let's watch his swing. Top of his backswing. What do you think his first move is? Drop. See the drop? Drop. So even this move here, his arms are passive. They're just like, watch what happens. You see how much his shoulders move, right? The arms follow the shoulders. That's what that is. And then they and then they go after the shoulder F. Well, you got a sequence, all right? So between here and here, the 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 shoulders, I mean the arms now accelerate, but the, you do not want them engaging early. This is so the drop, 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 and then go. So he's a drop through the ball, rotate, and then sort of slide. Like, I don't know how you do this one. That's a, quite the move through the ball. But again, different strategies through the ball, but they all, you can see, drop and move back off that line, get their body back this way. Mo Norman already stood up like this, but then he stood up and dropped even further away. Amazing move, amazing move. Stunning to me that people haven't, in the PGA of America and PGA of Canada, haven't analyzed his younger swing to really see what the guy did. And you can see he drops big time. Here's Patrick Rogers. He does more like a, a trunk drop. Watch this. And then, boom. Isn't that amazing? I mean, look how low his body gets to the ground. It's incredible. So lots of strategies through the ball. Lots of drop moves. This is Doug Sanders. You know who Doug Sanders was? Very short backswing, wide, very, very wide feet at address. And you can see it is the exact same thing. Backswing, kind of like what Mo did. He backs off the ball. He doesn't stand up, though, but you can see at impact, he drops further away and down through the ball. There's setup. There's impact. You can see less of a drop and less of a backward move than Mo, but the same thing. I think the reason, the reason why Mo could hit 500 balls, 800 balls a day is because he literally just... He used his body almost like a, a his body was kind of like a whip. The club was the tip of the whip, and the ground was the hand that moved the whip, which was Moe's body. I mean, that's the best way that I could describe it, uh, even though it was, it's a lateral rotational type of move, not a direct whip cracking deal. So no matter what your backswing position is, you need to drop. These all, all these people do this. Backswing position doesn't make any difference. None of these people... At impact are going this way and this way. None of so Lori Davies, traditional takeaway. Ray Floyd sucked it inside. He didn't go up or this way at impact. They all have the same and Matthew Wolf, they all none of them go this way. They all go down in this way. Or just straight down. I mean, there is no up up and forward move. They're all staying off of their toes through impact. Laura Davies actually jumps backwards with straight legs. Her move through the ball is pretty amazing. You should watch her video. And I'll show you the list of heel videos at the end of this video, which I know is longer than most of them, but I wanted you to see that this Mo Norman stuff that I'm talking about here is not like a, it's not something revolutionary. It just hasn't been looked at because teaching pros, touring pros, analysts, and amateurs who want to get better, whether you're an elite amateur, a sucky amateur, or marginally suck, whatever, you know what I'm talking about. Everyone focuses on the hands. And we want to be focusing on the body. So this is two versions of me driving. This one here on the left is a better down and back move, just slightly compared to this one. You can see it. So address and impact. No matter which move you make, you do not, I mean, you can, you can see I'm sort of dropping a little bit on this side, just more, moving backwards more on this side. No matter which one, you do not want to go up or forward. And you don't want to lose your spine angle. I maintain my spine angle. I had a teeny bit of forward pelvic move here. A lot, none here, obviously. You just do not want to lose your setup position at impact in terms of where your head is. Most importantly, you do not want your your butt moving off that butt line. Now, this is like not. I'm only showing this because I don't remotely drop like the pros do. But when I watch Mo do this, I'm thinking, well, I could probably like, well. I didn't go to the range. I went to a little park and I hit wiffle balls. So we know that at the top of the backswing, no matter who we're talking about, they all drop 
through impact, right? They're all dropping. Now, I don't drop. These all drop. They're all dropping. Drop. Drop. So I decided that I'm just going to go to the park and just try to mimic Mo Norman's drop. And that's what I did. So here we are. See, this is where Mo set up initially, top of the backswing, and then dr dropping, you can see. Now I'm hitting wiffle balls because literally I'm dropping. You see how far I'm dropping for me? That's a big drop and I'm way off. My, my head's way, way back there. I can't do this on the, the actual range of the course. I mean, I can, it's just the ball goes everywhere. I just wanted to feel the move. I wanted to feel the drop move. So I'll compare myself now with Mo. You can see, looks identical. Only he can hit it and I can't. So this means that for me, I cannot do Mo's drop lateral lunge rotate. Well, I could do it maybe, but maybe just drop a teeny bit. And I cannot remotely do his swing. And you know, most no one has yet to repeat his his actual swing. And this is of course his old man swing, which is which is absolutely stunning. So my suggestion for you is you can try and this is all I did, right? Just oh by the way, before I hit wiffle balls, I hit little like dog toys. <laughs> little, you know, fluffy dog dog toys, because I didn't feel like, you know, I didn't know where I was gonna strike a golf ball on the range. So I did this and I and I and I went to the range and tried to drop. I can only drop drop a little bit as I said before. So what, what should you do? Well, you've got to figure out what your movement strategy through the ball should be. So you can either drop, laterally lunge, rotate like Mo. You can extend and rotate like Kepka and other people. Remember, they push off from the toes. Or you can drop, rotate like the little girl does, which a lot of pros do. Or you can do, actually, lots of pros do what Bryson DeChambeau used to do. They kept their, their, their hips sort of level. DeChambeau just has straighter legs versus more flex legs. If you watch Dustin Johnson, for example, he pretty much keeps his pelvis the same height, back, set up, backswing, downswing, and impact. Uh, and these guys, they change. So there are lots of strategies through the ball that you can work. You've got to figure out what your strategy is. I'm going to end up being some combination of these two here. I just don't know how much I can drop. And the reason why I want to learn to drop is because I'm older and if you can drop uh, the way Mo and the way Danny Lee drops, then you have way less muscular effort needed with your upper body and which also protects your lower back, which is a consideration for me as I'm in, in my the beginning of my seventh decade. Jeez. So what should you do? Figure out what your ideal setup position is for you. Here are all the different videos I've done on looking at how pros move through the heels. I, this look here, if you're still watching, you should watch this video. And Ben Kern comments, he goes, he goes, oh, I found this randomly. And he said, he goes, I got, you know, to, to tell you the truth, I never really spent much time thinking about this, which is so telling, right? He seems like the nicest guy. And he, he was able to play on the, the only club pro that made it to the, that made the cut at the 2018 PGA Championship. And you know, he focuses on hand stuff too. I mean, none of them focus on the most important part, and that is leg action, because you never want to move onto the balls of your feet at impact and stand up. So you want to figure out your setup position. Look at the heels. Try to figure out your own heel strategy. Here are some ideas that I have had, ones that I've identified, like squatting during the downswing, Hogan. Now, you know, uh, Mo Norman kind of falls back onto his heels and squats, so it's not, he's like a hybrid, but you can see Scheffler certainly falls back onto his heels. Rotate back. Dustin Johnson actively sitting back while starting the, the uh, down the, the back swing. These are you, this Peter Ulon and Carl, Charles Schwartz does that. I mess, I've been messing with this myself for a while. Knee extension move of Laura Davies or Brooks Kepka jump back rotation like, like like Justin Thomas will do when he's going after drive. So there's lots of movement strategies through the ball. You need to figure out what movement strategy fits your movement skills, and you must do this at a setup distance from the ball such that you do not go north of the headline during impact and your butt does not move toward the ball. If you do that, then you'll play a, a lot, a much, you'll play much better golf if you figure out which strategy works for you. So if you have an interest in this, you found this interesting, you can obviously you can go over here to Amazon, put in the name of the book and check it out. You can also go to my dflame.com website where I have descriptions there and I'll have a link down, down below as, as well.